Hey guys, you're welcome again to my channel. I'm Scholastica. I'm a Nigerian trained registered nurse midwife currently living and working as a nurse in the UK. If this is your first time, thank you for being here. Please hit the subscribe button below so you'll be notified when I drop more videos. And thank you to all my returning subscribers. Thank you for your love and your support. I love you guys. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I survived my first month living in the UK. I'm going to be talking about the mistakes I made. I'll be sharing tips as I talk about this story. So get a pen and paper and make notes if you want to so you don't make the same mistakes I made. Now guys, I think when you are coming to the UK, you should start preparing as soon as you get your certificate of sponsorship. So browse about the location that you've been posted to, browse about the weather, it's always cold and raining in the UK. So you want to shop for clothes that is going to befit the weather conditions here. So get your jackets from Nigeria, you can get just one or at most two jackets. You just need something to keep you warm until you get paid and buy more better quality clothes here. So get a jacket, get a scarf, get umbrella if you want to. Umbrella because the umbrellas that I've seen here, they are very fragile. So we have really good strong durable umbrellas in nigeria so you can get a small one that you just fold up and put in your bag and guys when you get your jackets make sure you don't put them in your luggage it's the one that you are going to check in so you want to keep your jackets handy you can tie it around your waist or hold it on your arm so that when you get to the airport you don't have to go through the stress of opening your bags and scattering everything to get your jacket so just keep it handy where it will be um, it will be easy for you to assess and guys one mistake I made Please don't make this mistake. Make sure you buy a lot of snacks before you embark on your journey <laughs> Oh goodness, I will never try that again Like I came to the UK without buying enough snacks. So I was starving in the plane Of course they gave us food in the plane, but I didn't really enjoy the food The only thing I enjoyed was the jollof rice that was given to us from Lagos down to Dubai Every other thing from Dubai just tasted bland and I was guessing from what I saw in the menu So I didn't really know what was on the menu. I just guessed according to what I saw there. So if I see something like potato, I'll be like, oh, I know what potato is. Okay, let me have this. And then I end up eating potato, mashed potato and soup. Mm. It was horrible. And then I was salivating and thinking of all the galas, all the crackers, everything I should have loaded my bag with <laughs> before entering the plane. So guys, don't be like me. Buy enough snacks that is going to last you through the journey. You can buy popcorn too, so that when you are watching movies on the plane, you just keep on eating and you won't be hungry by the time you get to the UK. <laughs> so that's tip number one. <laughs> Another tip is that I didn't do this because I didn't know, but now I'm letting you know so you don't make the same mistake. Write your full name in a cardboard paper. Just maybe not a cardboard paper, a plain sheet of paper. Just write your full name out so that when you get to the arrival session in the airport in the UK, you can hold it up for whoever is going to come pick you up. So that when the person sees the name, they will know that, oh yes, this is the person I'm supposed to pick up. For me, I didn't know that, so I didn't do that. When I got to the airport, I was lost. <laughs> And to make matters worse, my phone stopped working. My phone just died on getting here. So I couldn't even contact the um, person that was supposed to come pick me up. The luck I had was that before leaving Nigeria, I made a list of all the emergency contacts that I think I would want to get in touch with when I get to the UK. So you can do that to take a sheet of paper and write the names and contacts of your agency, your employer. If you have friends already in the UK, write out their numbers. If you have family in the UK, write out their numbers. Just anybody you think that you want to get in contact with when you get to the UK, write them out because your phone might disappoint you like mine disappointed me. So make sure you are prepared. And guys, when you get when I got to the airport, um, because my phone was down, I didn't have any means to contact whoever was supposed to come pick me up. So I went to meet the one of the immigration officers in the airport, and I was like, "Please, my phone is down. I need to contact so so person to come pick me up." And the the man was kind enough to let me use his phone, so I was able to call my pickup service. 
and the funniest thing was that this guy was just standing in front of me the whole time I was disorganized. It was not a funny story at all. <laughs> it was not a funny experience. So don't be thrown off balance like me. Come prepared. So my pickup um, service, the driver took me to the B&B &B where I'm going to stay for the next two weeks. Now guys, a lot of employers have accommodation package for their nurses when they first arrive in the UK. So mine was a two was two weeks B and B accommodation. B and B means bed and break and breakfast. So it means that breakfast is already included in the accommodation fee. So my um pickup service took me to my B and B. Now it for some of you it might not be a B and B. It might be an hotel or um it might be a hotel or shared accommodation. I know some employers just take the nurses from the airport down to the accommodation where they are, they are supposed to share with another colleague. But for me, I didn't want that. I wanted my privacy. So I just told them that just book a B&B &B for me. So I got to my B&B. &B. I was hungry. I was tired. It was a long and stressful journey. So I just... Um, refreshed myself went to bed oh before I went to bed my Nigerian colleague I have one um, friend that works in the place that I'm supposed to resume so she came to my B&B &B with her family and a hot bowl of Indomie oh my goodness that Indomie was like Christmas fried rice I ate that Indomie and slept off so the next day she came around again and she took me around town she showed me my place of work our place of work <laughs> some of my colleagues that were working that day she introduced me to them she took me to the train station the shopping centers you know she took me to a lot of places that were necessary for me to know about and guys i also recommend that when you um get to the uk rest the first day you can rest the second day and then the third day try to get to know your surroundings so come out and locate your place of work locate how long it's going to take you to get to your place of work then check the checking the shopping centers out the train stations the bus stations just know your surroundings so that when you start work it won't take you a lot of time to locate where you're actually going to resume so you won't be late for work so get that sorted out before you resume work and also another thing that is of importance is to get your BROP card now your BROP card is like your work permit or your residence permit so when you get your visa a letter is going to accompany your passport that letter is going to say the it's going to um, tell you the nearest post office where you should pick up your BROP card in the UK within a specified period of time. If that time passes and you've not gotten your BROP card, it's going to create some issues for you trying to get another one. So try to get your BROP card on before the date that was specified on that letter. Now, after getting your BROP card, you should also try to open your bank account. Now, opening a bank account is very easy and straightforward in the UK. All you need is your reference letters, your passport, and um, your BROP card if you've gotten it, and any other information that you want, you can take along. If they don't want it, they won't upload it. Almost everything here is online. You don't need to go around with papers. So, um, get your reference letter from your place of work. I got mine twice because the first one I got was not uh, was not um, accepted in the bank. It was very vague. It just said something like so so person what um is an employee of so so place full stop. So it was not accepted. I had to go back and get another reference letter. So guys, when you get your reference letter, make sure it's it has enough details so you want something like so so person is an employee of so so place resumed work at so so time the contract is for so long the um salary is this amount you know just um things like that so that um, when you get it to the bank it's specific enough to you and they can work with it so after opening your bank and for some of you guys that are unable to open your bank account within the first 
months of coming maybe you have an issue you will, um, you just have difficulties opening a bank account there's also another option of opening a monzo account now a monzo account is online and you can even open it while you are still back home in nigeria so all you have to do is go online open the monzo account and your salary will be paid to your monzo account pending when you open your bank account now you should also try to um register with a gp practice for your checkup now this is not really a priority per se but you should try to do your gp registration within the first two months of arrival and guys you should also try in fact this should be a priority for you try to get your accommodation sorted out within the two weeks that you are staying in your b and b now for me my contract says um my employer is going to pay for two weeks b and b accommodation before i get my permanent house your contract might be different your employer might be, is different so we we have different contracts just go with whatever your contract says if your contract says they are paying for one month hotel accommodation for you or one week b and b accommodation just make sure that you get your house your um your rented apartment sorted out before the stay before the um your stay in your accommodation your b and b or your hotel or your shared accommodation runs out so that you won't be stranded because for me my b and b was just paid for two weeks so if i had stayed an extra day that extra day is going to be paid for from my pocket and i didn't have that money to spend so make sure you try to sort out your accommodation within the specific period of time that your employer is paying for you in your first place of residence when you get to the uk so um when getting an accommodation, you don't even need to come to the UK first for you to start looking for accommodation. You can start looking for your accommodation while you are staying in Nigeria. So use property apps, like check online around the location where your um, place of work is because you don't want to get somewhere that is very far from your place of work. So try to get some options down while you are staying in nigeria so that when you come to the uk all you have to do is to just go and view the property and if you like it then you get your employer to pay for it now some employers or most employers have that as part of the relocation package to pay for maybe your first month accommodation or your first three months accommodation is different with every employer just make sure you get um you get paid for whatever your contract says so if they are going to pay for your first month accommodation make sure you let them know on time because at times these employers can delay for no reason now there is um one apartment that i wanted to get it was a two-bedroom apartment and it was just three minutes away from my place of work i really wanted that place and it was going for 475 pounds a month so it was not really that expensive to me and I didn't get it because for one reason or the other my employer did not pay for the accommodation at the time they were supposed to so I lost that place and someone else got it and the next place that was available for me was a four bedroom house and it was about seven minutes work from work and 500 pounds per month now I know what you are thinking a four bedroom house is too big right yeah I thought so too but what shots do I have in fact I'm so happy I got it because it's going to be uh, i like this space <laughs> let me just leave it at that that i like this space <laughs> and i like the location of the house so i'm living in a four bedroom apartment i'm paying 500 pounds per month and it's just seven minutes walk to my workplace I keep thinking to myself like how did I move from living in a self con in Lagos to living in a four bedroom house in the UK oh my god <laughs> god is good <laughs> so um I got this house paid for and even before I left my B&B &B, my two weeks there almost elapsed like I've been telling my employer to pay for this place pay for this place but there was a bit of a delay and then the last day they were telling me that um the house is not ready they want to put some things in place and then i'm like no don't worry don't put anything in place i'm going to move in like that because i'm not staying an extra day in this b and b i'm going to move in like that if it is cleaning forget it i'll be ninja babe i'll go clean this house when i reach here but when i got here everything was in place so i don't even know why they said it was not 
in order in case you are wondering where i live i live in northern ireland it's very affordable here during your interview you are going to be asked if you have a preferred location for me i picked northern ireland because i didn't want a place that i would be asked to pay um too much bids northern ireland was a great place for me to start from at least in this place i'm living in a four bedroom apartment i pay 500 pounds it's just seven minutes walk to my place of work i don't pay council tax i don't pay water bills i'm close to everything i need so it's really ideal for me at this point of my life and i'm not planning to live here anytime soon <laughs> so when you are picking your preferred location think of what you want and what is going to favor you and then go for that area and when you are picking your accommodation you want to go to you want to um, pick somewhere that is close to your place of work as much as possible if for any reason you can't get anywhere close to your place of work then look for somewhere that is close to the train station or the bus station because there are times that you are going to wake up late and you want to get to work as fast as you can Picking somewhere very far from your place of work is going to be a disadvantage at those times. And also think of um, the future when you are renting your accommodation. If you are expecting your family to come and live with you for the next 3-4 months or within the next 3-4 months rather, then you don't want to go for a one bedroom apartment or somewhere that is too small. So go for a bigger space that you can present to immigration and it will be approved. Now guys, after getting your accommodation sorted, you can move into your accommodation. My house is not furnished, so only buy um, properties that you absolutely need. For me, during the first month, I only got a bed. That is the only thing I needed at that point. I did everything in my room. I eat in my room. I watch movies with my phone. In fact, my room was everything apart from the bathroom. <laughs> so only buy things that you absolutely need remember you came to the uk with limited funds and you don't want to use the money you came with to buy unnecessary things that you think are necessary at that point by the time you start any salary you can easily buy a lot of things that you need so for this one month just limit your spending to what you really need and um another thing guys is that you should not um underestimate the importance of google maps like Google Maps have really saved me from a lot of awkward situations and embarrassing moments in this place. I still go around with my Google Maps, even within my area where I live, because I don't want to get lost. So I really recommend you use your Google Maps. Google Maps is almost accurate in this in this part of the world. So um, make your Google Maps your friend. Another thing, guys, is shopping. Like when you are coming to the UK come with a lot of food stuff like buy a lot of food stuff you don't really need to buy a lot of clothes i don't think you should get too much clothes like you get better clothes that suits the weather condition here in the uk than in nigeria so it's better you load your 223 cages with food stuff and come with very few warm clothes that you need within the first one month you can um buy other clothes later but just come with something you know that you will that you that you will use within the one the first one month but for food stuff you want to come with enough that is going to last you as long as possible so come with a lot of food stuff come with wigs when i was coming i didn't really buy a lot of things because the last month i spent in nigeria was a bit rough for me i was sick i was not eating i was weak so i was not able to shop as much as i wanted to i didn't buy a lot of things i didn't even make my hair which was another bad decision so i came to the uk wearing a wig please make your hair before coming to the uk no matter how sick or how weak you are make your hair before coming to the uk because I used the um, wig for the first one, two months, and then it got to a point I was so sick and tired of using wigs. I wanted to make my hair, but it was so expensive. You have to think of the money you're going to pay to buy the attachment, to pay for workmanship, to transport yourself down to the salon or wherever you're going to make the hair. So when you think about all that, you see that it's not even worth it at all. So most times now I get I buy um, wigs from Aliexpress because I didn't come with a lot of wigs, which was another bad mistake. So buy um, wigs before coming. For now, I get most of my wigs from Aliexpress. They are um, affordable and they are also good wigs. But 
left for me i would have preferred to get wigs from nigeria at least if i go to trade fair and i see a wig i like i try it out if i don't like it then i change it and get another one but when i buy from aliexpress i think of the stress of returning it if i don't like it and then i just decide to manage it so if you are watching this video and you are still in nigeria then buy your wigs from nigeria or buy some wigs from nigeria before coming over to the uk so when you are coming to the UK, you want to come with as much money as you can afford. There is no problem when you come with too much money. The problem is when you come with too little money. Now I came with just £350 which I expected to last me till I get my first salary. I was expecting to be paid after a month actually. But for one reason or the other, I didn't get paid until 6 weeks after I started working. So I was this close to becoming broke. And another thing guys is that when you start work, you are not going to be working as a registered nurse. You are going to be working as a pre-registered nurse. Being a pre-registered nurse means that you are not a registered nurse yet. So you won't be allowed to carry out any nursing roles and responsibilities. Instead, you will be working as a senior carer. So you are going to be paid as a senior carer, which is not as much as your salary as a registered nurse. I think my first pay was about £1,100. Which was a lot of money to me then but anyway it was enough for me then because i didn't really buy a lot of things and i only started furnishing this house after i got my pin and i started earning like a registered nurse and that is what i think you should do too so you came with limited funds don't spend that money buying unnecessary things that you think are necessary buy things that you absolutely need and make sure you come from nigeria with a lot of things that is going to last you for that one month like food stuff i won't really recommend you to come with um, a lot of clothes you will get warm clothes here in um in the uk that is more suitable for the weather than in nigeria so come with a lot of food stuff instead and also come with black pens now i didn't know that i had to come with black pens in fact i didn't even know this but documentation is done with just black pen in the uk so i came with no black pen and few blue pens which are useless by the way i could not use the blue pens and then now <laughs> now when i think of it it's just when i go and buy pens i keep thinking to myself like why should i get this pen for this amount why should i buy this one single pen for this amount when i can use the same money to buy a box of pen back home in nigeria so guys come with plenty black biro <laughs> and another thing you want to come with is hot water bottle let me show you the one i use so this hot water bottle is a lifesaver this is not mine i didn't come with any this is for my nigerian colleague here i borrowed this when i first came in and i just never returned it so um what i do is just feed this up with hot water and put it under my duvet and it keeps me warm all through the night i use this every single day in fact not just at night even during the daytime when i'm watching movies i just heat it up with hot water and wrap my arms around it and i'm warm so you can get this in nigeria for a cheaper rate compared to when you buy it here so get your hot water bottle from nigeria you can buy it in maternity wards you know just browse about it buy it from jumia if you don't know where to get it okay so so guys another tip for you for shopping is that when you want to buy things when you want to buy your groceries try not to buy everything in one shop now i know that that can be hard um, when you first come in because you don't know the shops around so what i recommend you do and what i did was when you want to buy your groceries buy everything in one shop today then keep your receipts the next day you go to another shop and buy what you need and keep your receipts so for example if i want to buy bread today I buy my bread in Sainsbury and I keep my receipt. Tomorrow I buy the bread in Tesco, keep my receipt. Another day I buy in um, 
pound land and keep my receipts now at the end of the day compare these receipts and then you'll be able to find places that are going to give you better value for your money so bread can be sold for two pounds in sainsbury and you'll be surprised that that same bread is going for one pound in pound land so that's the importance of keeping your receipts so within your first month you want to be doing research really so your research does not just end in nigeria when you come to the uk continue to do research that is how you will get um, the shops to buy milk from, the shops to buy bread from. So you'll be surprised that maybe you're buying detergent and all this from Poundland and buying um, meat, fish and every other thing from Sainsbury. So shop with sense <laughs> so that you can save as much as you can in this country. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is accent. Hmm. The accent can be really hard to understand at first, but what I would just advise you to do is listen. Listen to everything that you have been told. You know, when you start work, it's going to be hard trying to like blend in and to know things to do, what to do, and you know, don't be too hard on yourself. We are coming from somewhere different from what they practice here. So just um Put yourself in the learning mode and be ready to learn and unlearn some things that you've picked up along the way in Nigeria. So just be open-minded and listen to whatever you are being told or whatever corrections is being given to you. Listen to it. Listen to their accent, guys. As time goes on, you will pick up on the accent and you find out that you'll be um, finding it easier to understand what they are saying. Now, one thing you should know is that our own Nigeria accent is not as easy as you think it is too. Like, I didn't know that the accent was hard to understand until someone told me that your accent is a bit hard to understand. And then another person told me that I talk really fast and I'm like, what? If you think I talk fast, how do you think you sound? And then there are some that will compliment your accent and be like, oh, you have very good accent. I like the way you talk. Your English is very good. How old were you when you started learning English? And then I'll, I'll be like, I started learning English when I was little. Like we speak English in Nigeria from kindergarten, my textbooks and everything were in English. And then the same person will ask you, oh, really? So how do you say hello in Nigeria? And then I'll be like, huh? I just told you now that we speak English in Nigeria. Hello is hello. <laughs> yeah, they are friendly, they're inquisitive, they want to know about your country. So keep on repping Ninja from afar. <laughs> and guys, one thing, now I don't know if I should say this, but let me just say this. Now, I see some Nigerians, they are here for like, what, two, three, four months maximum and then they want to sound British and then they start talking and what is coming out of their mouth is not British and it's not Nigerian. It's kind of a mix up of both. And those people, they, they just sound very funny to, to listen to. So I don't know, Sha, just be true to yourself. Now some people are telling me that my accent will soon change. Mm. I don't think my asset will change, Chao, but if it changes, maybe you guys will be the first person to know. Just let me know when my accent starts to change because me, I don't know if it will change. <laughs> I don't think it will ever change, Sha. <laughs> maybe correct Ninja, baby. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to end this video here. I don't want to let this video not be unnecessarily long. So, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you picked up on the tips. I know I didn't really specify the tips like tip one, tip two, tip three. So, I hope you were smart. <laughs> I hope you were able to pick up on the tips, pick up on the mistakes along the way. And thank you so much for being here. If you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below. I'm going to try to upload more often so i don't want you to miss out on anything thank you i love you guys bye